Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to use the address function in Excel. The address function is used to retrieve the address of a cell by using given row and column identifiers. For example, if we input row 4 and column 1, we should retrieve the cell address A4. In this video, I'll cover four main examples to demonstrate the different ways in which the address function can be used. Let's start with example 1. Here we want to use the address function to show the cell addresses A1, D6 and Z10. To obtain the address of cell A1, we type equals address and then enter the row which is 1 and since the first column is A, the column number is 1 as well. Therefore Excel has retrieved A1. To obtain the address of cell D6, we again type equals address However, this time the row is 6 and the column is 4. Finally, for Z10, we take row 10 and column 26, as Z is the 26th letter in the alphabet. You may have noticed that all the cell addresses provided are surrounded by dollar signs, i.e. they are absolute references. This is the default setting of the address function. In the next example, we will consider how to incorporate relative references as well. Firstly, let's retrieve cell F8, which is the cell we're currently in, and use relative references. In other words, we don't want it to have any dollar signs. To do this, type equals address, use 8 for the row, and 6 for the column, as we're in column F. Finally, type 4 to use the relative references mode. Let's now retrieve the next cell, which is F9, and format it so that the column has no dollar signs, but the row number does. Once again, we type equals address, enter 9 for the row, and 6 for the column, and this time type 2 instead of 4. Finally, we want the column to have dollar signs, and the row number not to. Here we enter a row of 10, a column of 6, and finally type 3. Next, let's consider how to apply other formats. Firstly, you may want to display the address using a relative notation, also known as R1C1. To do this, type equals address, enter row 8, column 9. We're going to leave the references absolute, so we can leave this part blank. And finally type 0 to use the relative notation. Instead of showing the cell address I8, this notation therefore shows row 8, column 9, which some people may find more intuitive. Finally, we can add the sheet identifier in front of the cell address. To do this, enter row 9, column 9. We can leave the next two parts blank and finally type the sheet name. In the final example, I'll show you how to use the row and column functions together with the address function to return the cell address of this cell. Let's firstly use the row function to find the row number. Next, let's use the column function to find the column number. And finally, we can combine the two using the address function. Using the row and column functions therefore reduces the need to manually identify the row and column numbers and also makes it easier to apply the address function to other cells quickly. This brings us to the end of this video where we've covered different examples of the address function. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.